Hello all, the practitioner here. I'm working bare-chested because I'm here to support evolution. Um, the reason I state this is because of the fact that um, probably both religious people and my fellow uh, agnostics uh, and the atheist contingent are going to be highly angry with me when I finally am done with this video. Um, I've been doing some thinking lately, and it just occurred to me that there may be evidence for a case for God. Now, don't get angry with me, okay? D religious people, sorry to disappoint you, but all your religions are still invalid. And uh, I'll show you why in a minute. Agnostics, this is, I think you'll, I think you'll get a kick out of what I'm about to say. Atheists, don't get mad at me yet, just um, hear me out. And like I said, I think you too will get a kick out of this. Okay. Um... In the physics community, the multiple worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics has been fairly well accepted for some time now as probably the best contingent uh, theory. Uh, what's interesting is, again, I've uh, made several references to a... Uh, hang on, let me go get the article. Uh, where is it here? In uh, the November 22nd, uh, sorry, 24th to 30th issue of New Scientist magazine, they had a um, they had an article on the front called "Into the Void: First Evidence of Another Universe," and it was on page 36, I believe. Uh, yep, no, 34. Sorry, I misnumbered it. Anywho, um, basically, what they're talking about is uh, let's see. Um, okay, they go into uh, a fair amount of technical detail. I can't read. Uh, the entire thing, but, um, but what they're, uh, okay, where is it, where is it, uh, anyway, what they found is that they found this enormous void in, uh, space, um, about, uh, 8 billion mile, about 8 billion light years away, which, um, has grown to around 900 million light years across, and, uh, the void contains, uh, 25 to 45 percent, uh, fewer galaxies than you would expect. Um, now what was it? Um, a cluster so big uh, is impossible. To, um, anyway, basically uh, they're talking about um, a void so big uh, that it's virtually impossible to explain with standard cosmology. Um, where uh, when the universe has rolling climate fluctuations. Sorry, there's a lot of technical jargon in here. Um, basically, this apparently, uh, according to this article. Um, there's a lot of... Okay, well, basically, they're talking about a lot of stuff in here. It's a lot of technical. You can read it for yourself. It goes from pages 34 to uh, 37 of this issue of New Scientist. But basically, what they're talking about is that this could be evidence, uh, one of the first two major pieces of evidence, both for string theory and for the multiple worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Uh, according to this article, MWI had to be quoted in order to avoid invoking the anthropic principle for string theory. Now, the, uh, how is this relevant? Well, here's my thought. If the multiple worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics is correct, uh, you know, just in general, and it works for the macroscopic level too, <clears throat> then theoretically speaking, every possibility for the creation of the uh, every possibility uh, from uh, you know for every possible event sooner or later has a branch off point in the many worlds uh, theory of quantum mechanics. Now, remember those Gosh numbers that are back at the beginning of the universe, the countervailing force of gravity and stuff like that, right? Well. Um, for the multiple worlds interpretation, it is possible that there were uh, an instant, universe, instant number of universes uh, which bore life. However, there's also a possibility uh, that amongst all the universes that were created, and even amongst those which may have had life on them, this may not be the only one. Uh, and, here's, and here's my thought why. There's, a, uh, two possible, uh, there's two possibilities in relation to this one. God created the universe. Now, hang on. This is where the theistic argument comes in here, and I think you'll find this funny. When the universe uh, came into existence, um, or uh, again, if we uh, follow, uh, if string theory is correct, there was a collapse from our previous universe, and sooner or later there might have been an eventual beginning. Or the Big Bang, as far as we know, it could have been accurate. It could have just been straight created. So here's the thing. Either God created the universe, or he didn't. Which means in one of the universes, probably somewhere down the line, you know, um, if these multiple universes exist, 
you know, and again, now we have evidence. Uh, we have, you know, uh, evidence at least for the MWI. This one, uh, the void was supposed to be evidence for the multiple worlds interpretation. Uh, the work for string theory itself was supposed to come from the Large Hadron Collider when it's actually done. So, again, there is empirical evidence for the multiple worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics. Now, as I was saying, the bottom line is that there would be some universe line, or uh, there would be some universe line where there would have to be some sort of omnipotent being that created its own universe. You know, and uh, and you know, pertaining to what the Bible said, in some universe line there would have to be something like that. But here's the interesting bit: if that God existed, there would have to be, uh, you know, it, you know, the God exists, God not exists, right? It too, in its own universe line, or in its own sheaf of universe lines, would be susceptible to the exact same quantum laws, and there would probably be a whole bunch of these multiple so-called omnipotent gods who are all in each of their own like universe lines making a decision going, hmm, do I want the omega to end here or here? And every single one of their own universe lines, if they actually were accurate, would, would have their own Bible, their own religion, their own thing. We'd be having a god that was much more like a Greek god, you know, um... Much more human, uh, much more less omnipotent. I mean, the Greek gods were not really omnipotent. They had limits. They could, um, you know, they couldn't undo each other's work. Uh, you know, that basically, if another god had done something, um, uh, there was a, a direct quote a while back uh, when um, Athena had done something to somebody, and uh, somebody prayed to Zeus to get him to uh, change it. This is all Greek myth. Um, he couldn't do anything because, according to the uh, law of the universe, an immortal could not do another immortal's work. You know, it was just simply that was the way it was. And the same would happen here. Now, of course, due to uh, lack of interaction between probable universes, this would be highly uh, impossible to prove. However, it is more likely. But here's the kicker. We see that evolution has taken place here. And unless my computer model simulation, which I've mentioned a few, uh, which I mentioned back in the uh, logic uh, critical thinking skills for everyone uh, several months ago, unless that whole computer simulation analogy for the universe is correct, then I don't suspect there's a god here, okay? I suspect the god is probably several universes over, and we are not going to get access to it. <laughs> you, know, you, you see what I mean? Anyway, so like I said, I, th I hope you get a kick out of this, but basically, there might be a god, uh, you know, and it's okay to believe in the god for religious people, but here's the problem. The god ain't talking to you. The god's not hearing you. <laughs> <coughs> 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 Also, as well, uh, string theory um, postulates as well that uh, again, should it be proven, that uh, that there are also uh, a myriad of other universes. But uh, here's the interesting ones: some of which whose physical laws may not even match our own. So the so-called idea of you know like where you wish something and it comes true, or you know like like on a macro level or what have you. You know, barring the so-called cyber search I've been talking about, barring the cyber search I've been talking about before, you know, that sort of thing would be, uh, you know, a, a god of omnipotence or something like that might exist there, or everybody in that universe might be a god, you know, you never know. So the point, of course, is, though, is that if there were, it might be in another universe, but it certainly ain't here. So, sorry, guys, uh, sorry, religious people, you can pray to your god all you want, but uh, your god is several universes over, he can't hear you, and he can't do anything here. <laughs> you know, there's limits to it, he's, he's confined within the laws, that, within, he's confined within, the, within his own timeline, he can't intersect over here. So, sorry. And as for atheists and agnostics, I think I pretty well dealt with the religious uh, claims of a god. They didn't create this universe. It might have created some alternate timeline. So, I think I pretty well dealt with that. Um, if people, uh, please people don't crawl out of the woodwork and start criticizing the left, right, and center. Um, again, I'm just simply saying there might be, uh, you know, there's probably more evidence now that a god does exist, but the god isn't here. You know, the god. It's unreachable, okay? So, for religious people, um, your your quest is hopeless and futile. That's why I'm saying it's that all religions are invalid, okay? Uh, atheists and agnostics, fellow atheists and agnostics, well, fellow agnostics and atheists, sorry. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That might be good for a laugh. Um, again, note that I said that vis-a-vis -a, -vis a god for our universe, I'm still a technical agnostic. Um, the reason I say I'm a technical agnostic is because... Um, uh, I'll explain that in the next video. Hang on.